Today we will be installing the Hallway Standard 3-Wheel Scooter Lift on a 2008 Ford Edge. This vehicle has a factory class 3-hitch receiver which makes it ideal for this hallway lift and compact scooter combination. Other hallway models and accessories are available that adapt to most vehicle hitch receivers and mobility devices. Prior to installing a hallway scooter or power chair lift, the vehicle will need to have a class 2 or 3 hitch receiver installed, along with a flat trailer light connector. Be sure to check your vehicle's owner's manual or contact your vehicle's dealer to verify that the vehicle and pre-installed hitch are capable of supporting the weight of the hallway and your mobility device. You can also refer to the hallway lift matcher located on our website to get a better idea of what hallway models are compatible with your vehicle and mobility device. The tools needed for this installation are wire cutters, strippers, and crimpers, a tape measure, a crescent wrench, a torque wrench, a utility knife, two 3 4 inch sockets or wrenches, two 7 16 inch sockets or wrenches, a 9 16 inch socket or wrench, a 1 4 inch socket or wrench, and a 5 16 inch socket. Although not required, you can use a drill for quicker and easier installation. We are going to begin this installation by placing the hallway box at the rear of the vehicle, removing the box lid, and locating the hardware bags. Leave the hallway in the base of the box as this will make for cleaner and easier installation later on. Now we will be wiring the vehicle from the rear of the vehicle to the vehicle's battery. If you elected to use the hallway portable battery pack option, you can skip this section. Pop the hood of the vehicle. Locate the hardware bag which contains the wiring harness. Begin your wiring from the rear of the vehicle, ensuring the two pin locking connector female hangs just beyond the hitch receiver by approximately one inch. Attach the wiring along the chassis towards the engine compartment with the provided zip ties found in the hardware bag. Making sure to avoid any hot spots, moving parts, or electrical components such as the vehicle's muffler, drive shaft, or onboard computer. Continuing by routing the wire up through the engine compartment to where the vehicle battery is located. Make sure the wiring is close enough in proximity to attach to the terminal of the battery. Once the wiring harness is routed, take the auto reset circuit breaker out of the hardware bag. Use the provided two self-tapping screws to attach the circuit breaker to a safe place in the engine compartment near the vehicle's battery using a 1 4 inch socket. Remove some of the gray shield on the 12 gauge wiring harness. Cut the white wire using wire cutters. Do not cut the black wire or connect any wires to the battery yet. Using the wire strippers, remove a half inch of the insulation off the end of the white wire that was just cut. Crimp a 10 gauge ring terminal to the end of the white wire that was just cut and stripped and attach it to the auto reset circuit breaker. Secure the ring terminal by tightening it down with a 3 8 inch nut. Then strip a half inch of the insulation off of each end of the section of white wire that was cut off of the wiring harness. Crimp a ring terminal onto each end of the white wire section. Attach one end of the white wire section to the auto reset circuit breaker and secure the ring terminal by tightening it down with a 3 8 inch nut using a crescent wrench. But do not attach either of the black or white wires to the battery yet. Using the wire strippers, remove a half inch of the insulation off the end of the black wire that was just cut. Crimp a ring terminal to the end of the black wire. Using wire cutters, 
snip the ring terminals from the white and black wire that will attach to the battery so that the terminals can slide onto the battery post screws without disconnecting the battery completely. This is helpful because some of the vehicle computers will lock down when the battery is disconnected and then reattached. Attach the black wire terminal to the negative battery post and tighten it down using a crescent wrench. Leave the white wire terminal to be attached later. Move to the rear of the vehicle and prepare to attach the lift. Remove any additional packing material as well as securing zip ties from the box and cut each corner using your utility knife so that the box lays flat on the ground. Also, at this time, open the additional box and remove your swing away or L tube. This is what you will use to adapt your hallway lift to your vehicle's hitch receiver. In this case, we will be installing a swingway so that the vehicle's rear hatch can open without obstruction from the lift and the user can easily access their vehicle's cargo area. Remove all packaging materials off of the swingway and insert the hitch adapter portion of the swingway into the vehicle's hitch receiver. Align one of the pre-drilled holes on the hitch adapter with the hitch receiver pin holes. Align these holes so that there is at least one and one quarter inch gap between the swing away and bumper. Insert the three and a half inch fully threaded bolt into the hitch receiver pin hole from the right side and into the swing away hitch adapter. The left side of the hitch adapter's pre-drilled holes are threaded in order to push the hitch adapter against the right side of the hitch receiver to keep the lift more secure and free from rattling. Using the torque wrench, torque the nut to 60 foot-pounds. Connect the Swingaway's male plug to the female plug on the installed wiring harness. Then connect the Swingaway to the lift by plugging the Swingaway's female plug into the lift's male plug. Next, plug the two-prong license plate light from the lift into the two-prong Swingaway plug furthest away from the vehicle. Insert the two-prong license plate light plug from the Swingaway plug into the trailer light harness on the vehicle. Now, move back to the vehicle's battery and attach the positive white wire terminal to the positive battery post using a crescent wrench. If you have purchased the portable battery pack option, at this time, simply insert the lift's female plug directly into the battery pack without plugging the lift into the swing away or vehicle's wiring harness. Turn the battery to the on position and set it nearby out of the way. Next, insert the two-prong license plate light plug from the lift into the two-prong swingway plug farthest away from the vehicle. Insert the two-prong license plate light plug from the swingway plug into the trailer light harness on the vehicle. Turn on the vehicle's running lights to verify the license plate light illuminates. Turn the vehicle's lights off. Measuring the distance from the bottom of the vehicle's hitch receiver to the ground will determine which of the pre-drilled holes in the swing-away hitch adapter you will use to support the lift. If the distance is 10 to 12 inches, use the top hole. If the distance is 13 to 14 inches, use the middle hole. If the distance is 15 to 17 and a half inches, use the bottom hole. If the distance is greater than 17 and a half inches, we have a specialty L-tube available to accommodate. Extend the lift mast a minimum of 7 inches by turning the key switch while the lift is still in the folded down position or until the fold lever clears the mast post. 
Manually lift the mast away from the platform, slide the lift towards the vehicle, and then extend and retract the mast as needed until the lift bracket hole on the mast aligns with the swing away lift adapter holes. Insert the 3.5 inch partially threaded bolt through the lift bracket. Screw on one of the provided nylock nuts to the inserted bolt and tighten until snug using a 3 fourths inch wrench while simultaneously ratcheting the bolt using another 3 fourths inch socket or wrench. Tighten just enough to still allow the mast to swivel around the swingway hitch adapter. Make sure the license plate is visible from the rear of the vehicle. If it is not visible, or if you are using the portable battery pack option, raise the license plate post by removing and reinserting the two 7 16 inch hex bolts and nylock nuts. If you are using the portable battery pack option, make sure the post is raised to the top hole. If you are using a battery pack, at this time slide the provided bolt-on battery tray over the key switch arm, slide two washers over the two 5 16 inch cap screws, and slide the cap screws through the battery tray and key switch arm. Attach one washer and nut to each cap screw and tighten the nuts to 28 foot-pounds using a torque wrench. Ensure that the nylon strap is routed through the tray and battery handle and that the buckle is clipped together. Reference your hallway manual for further battery pack operating and charging instructions. Now, secure all excess wiring from the license plate light with zip ties along the license plate holder post as well as any other loose wire from the lift as needed. Raise the hallway platform up to its fully upright folded position. Adjust the 9 16 inch swing away bolt by loosening the lock nut so that the bolt head can be snug against the hallway mast. And retighten the lock nut with a 9 16 inch wrench. This same process will be followed if you are using an L tube. While the platform is still in its fully upright folded position, adjust the carriage bolt outward by loosening the lock nut until it's snug against the carriage. Then retighten the lock nut with a 1 4 inch wrench. Remove all cardboard from the rear of the vehicle and dispose of it accordingly. Now, lower the lift so that it folds down and lays flat on the ground. Load the mobility device onto the lift. For safety and security purposes, every hallway is equipped with at least one cargo buckle to secure the mobility device. To use the cargo strap, simply lift the orange lever to 90 degrees while holding the release lever on the inside. The strap can then be pulled out and over the scooter with slight tension to eliminate slack. Once the strap is pulled over the scooter and hooked onto the D-ring, bring the orange lever down to about 45 degrees so the strap can be ratcheted for added tension. Then, return the orange lever to its down position to lock. Use the key switch to raise the platform with the mobility device aboard while ensuring that the fold lever passes in front of the guide post and the lift tilts back and starts clicking. The lift is equipped with an automatic hold down arm to secure the front of the mobility device. Make sure that the spring on the arm compresses down tightly. If the spring does not compress, lower the lift and adjust the hex screw by loosening the 9 16 inch lock nut. Once the proper tension is adjusted for the compression of the hold down arm, retighten the lock nut using a 9 16 inch wrench. 
Now, lower the hallway, remove the mobility device from the lift, and raise the lift to its fully upright folded position. Finally, to test the swingway, remove the cotter pin and T-post and swing the lift out. Always make sure the mobility device is unloaded from the lift when the swingaway is in use. Swing the lift back in and be sure to secure the swing away by putting the cotter pin and T-post back in place. Remove the four one-force inch hex bolts from the license plate frame to install the vehicle's rear license plate. Place the rear license plate over the holes and on the license plate frame and reinstall the four one-force inch hex bolts, washers, and nylock nuts on all four holes of the license plate frame. Tighten all nylock nuts securely with a one force inch wrench. Congratulations, you have successfully installed an easy access hallway lift.